Shelly raises the question, children's book illustration, which your, which your program focuses strictly yeah. on. Is that, is that the case with children's book illustration? Is it a, is it a prerequisite to, to learn all the, to know all the digital programs? Or do you still have people working in traditional mediums? No, uh, we do primarily um, traditional media. Uh, the emphasis is on experimentation. So, you know, as, as many different things as they can try as possible. And um, most of the students do come in with some basic knowledge of technology. And so we encourage them to work together and teach each other. Um, but they also do, um, like they, they do a lot of printmaking techniques. We've got an amazing print facility. Um, but there's things like the risograph machine that they learn how to use that and um, do different printing. And then also we encourage them um, to play around with Photoshop and how do you emulate the different print techniques. Because what happens a lot of times is they get dependent on the print lab and then they graduate and they you know move away and they don't have access to print facilities anymore. <sighs> so, you know, I think the the printing is really important just in learning basic processes and it really helps people, um, especially students who uh, find color difficult, you know, going through the different printmaking techniques really helps you to think about color in different ways. And so I think, you know, it's really, what's that? No, that's really cool. I never thought about, oh, okay. I didn't know that because <laughs> col color is a big issue. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, just having to limit your palette. Um, and, and so a lot of times, well, in thinking about the overlapping of color, the transparencies, and um, yeah, so a lot of times people will finish the course and then they have to kind of think about how, how do I work now, now that I don't have access to these facilities, and usually that does come down to Photoshop in some way. Hmm. Um, but anyway, I should show you some slides. Yeah. Slides. <laughs> okay. See if I can do this thing. So Cambridge School of Art. Um, it's a historical school um, in the middle of Cambridge, and it was kind of the first building. Um, and a bunch of other schools popped up around it, and kind of the Anglia Ruskin University built up. So it's part of Anglia Ruskin University, but it's the original um, school that was there. And Ruskin um, was like a famous British um, artist, and so a lot of a lot of things are named after him in Cambridge. Um, and he's the one who started the Cambridge School of Art. So pretty pictures of Cambridge. Wow. So if you guys want to visit. Um, so obviously there's, you know, history all around with Cambridge University and there's punters, that's the people on the, the water, which I still haven't done yet, um, but I hear is really fun. And so this is actually the Ruskin building. Um, Martin Salisbury is the guy who started the program uh, in 2001 and it was the first that was specifically for children's book illustration. So I, um, at least in Europe, and I think probably the world, um, but he ran it until I took over for him this year, and he still is there teaching, but he wanted to semi-retire, so he's working half-time now. But um, this is the view from his window in his office. And this is the Ruskin Gallery, so that's the inside. Um, so there's lots of shows there that are fun and exciting. Um, this is our main studio. And so you can see mm. there's, uh, it, it's really an international program. Um, people come from all over the world and there's, uh, right now I think there's only three Americans there taking the course, but um, they, they have um, offer full-time and part-time. And so most of the international students do full-time because they need to for their visas. And then the part-time is usually people who are either UK or EU. And um, so they, they're just there once a week. And they're usually 
um, you know, have families or live in other places. So we have um, like one woman who flies in from the Netherlands every week for the one, one day. Um, and a woman who comes in from Northern Ireland, she flies down once a week as well. Um, so we have the, the figure drawing room. And so there's classes a couple times a week that are free and you just pop in and, and draw. Um, this is a part of the print facilities. It's like a tenth of it. But um, they've got all of these fantastic old presses and um, like every printing process you can imagine. And they have this amazing uh, letterpress facility as well. Um, we also have the 3D lab where so you could go in there and you could um, laser cut, you know, if you wanted to design your own type, um, you could laser cut it and mount it on wood and then go into the letterpress lab and, and print your own type, which I haven't done yet. But wow. I know. Um, so just a couple of, of the famous historical alumni, Edward Bodden, who's um, like a, a really big name in the UK. Uh, was a student there, and Ronald Searle. And oh, wow. This is a picture of Ronald Searle when he was a student. This is him in his room just hanging out. I don't think our students are this laid back anymore, but... Well, he's wearing the tie. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but sandals, though. He's wearing oh, sandals. Yeah. <laughs> On the bed. <laughs> With his tea, uh, there's his afternoon candle. And he's got a little doll with him, too. I don't know if you can see that on the other pillow. Oh, a little. Is it a sailor? <laughs> yeah, it looks like it, right? <laughs> Just him and his doll having some tea. Anyway, uh, so this, this is uh, Pink Floyd. They were actually art students there and when they formed their band. And so uh, my predecessor, Martin Salisbury, were his offices it's on a balcony and it overlooks the room where Pink Floyd had their first gig so <laughs> that's kind of fun when I walk through I think oh Pink Floyd was here mm -hmm. um, and then Quentin Blake he he was he's not an alum but he um, has supported the school a lot over the years and he comes and he and uh, does talks um, at the school oh, wow. and this is him uh, his drawing of Ruskin who you know, was the one who started the school. So, and he also, um, if you're ever in London, he's opened a gallery that's the House of Illustration. And so they put on, it's, it's just constant illustration exhibitions, and it's really great. And we try to hear our students there, and I've been discussing partnerships with them as well. Um, so... I, I threw in some slides of just our um, the teachers on the course, so you can see who's there. Um, so this was some of Martin's work from a long time ago, because he started as a children's book illustrator. But then um, recently, he does a lot more just writing about children's books. Um, uh, Katerina. <laughs> <Mahalasu>. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> She's kind of our resident expert on anthropomorphic animals. Um, she's a doctor. She, she did her PhD on, on her books. And Becky Palmer is another PhD, and she um, did her research on uh, graphic novels. And so she's a graphic novel illustrator. Uh, Ellie Dolan is, is, she's now finishing her PhD, and um, she's the humor expert. There's some of her books. Uh, me, that's me. I am expert of nothing and PhD of nothing, <laughs> but those are my books. Uh, and then Viola is the most recent one to join the group, um, and she she's actually a children's book designer um, for DK Publishing. And, um, she just wow. finished actually taking the uh, course. So she just graduated, and but she's amazing. She's got um, actually three master's degrees. She's, wow. I, I think, a junkie, an education junkie. 
Those are beautiful images. <laughs> yeah, some of her books. Um, and then we have a lot of lecturers who just come in to do, you know, they, they have a specialty. Um, so they're not permanent staff, but they'll come in. And so that's what these people are. This is Anushka Alopez and Marta Altez. And Marta is someone whose work I studied when I was doing my writing MFA. And so it was really exciting to get here and have her be a teacher on the course. Um, Astrid does a lot of book cover work. Um, Alexis is another person whose work I studied when I was at VCFA. Um, Juliet is the color expert. It's beautiful. Um, Isabel is another graphic novelist. Uh, Paula Metcalf does really funny animal illustrations. Charles is, um, he does a lot of editorial illustration. He's a master printmaker. Oops. Sorry. That was my, my other thumb went rogue. Um, Birgitta Sif is another person who um, attended the course and now teaches on it. She's from Iceland. Um, and then Maisie Shearing. She um, won at the Bologna Book Fair every year. They give a big award for um, their exhibition. And I think it's like 7,000 euros or something. And, and she won a couple years ago. Um, and then Pam Smy, um, she's also an alum. And she um, was just recently nominated for this book, Thornhill, which is a beautiful book, um, but like a really dark subject. So um, only read it if you're feeling emotionally healthy. But um, she was just shortlisted for the um, Kate Greenaway Prize, which is kind of like the, the UK version of the Caldecott for this book. Okay, so I threw this in there to say um, we've been talking a lot about um, figure drawing and um, one of the big focuses of the course, the first module, is um, actually on uh, observational drawing. So we go to different locations and draw, um, you know, we do workshops on, on color and tone and, and that sort of thing too, but um, you're mainly filling up as many sketchbooks as you can um, just doing observational drawing and then feeding that into um, your imagery. So this was an example, a student example of how they were they started by drawing um, different dancers and then they used those same poses to start drawing their characters in those positions um, and then created a sequence that um, you know was so Aww. even the illustration uh, it's based on observational drawing. And then this is another example. Is this one of your students? Marta Altez. One of my students, but she's, she's actually the one who I said I, I studied her work when I was in grad school. Um, but she did this while she was on the course. Wow. And so, yeah, it, this was in her second module, which is sequential imagery. And... So she was creating this all based on um, figures that she drew when she was in the first module, which was the observation module. Those are so, just yeah, even though it's like really graphic and illustrative, it, it's based on observational drawing. Okay, so when the students finish, um, it's a year and a half for full-time students and two and a half years for part-time students. Um, they put together all of their work into a catalog and a website, um, and then they have this big show in London. So they send their, the catalog out to all of the um, publishers in London, and they have a private view night, and it's really exciting. And the publishers, the course has such a reputation that the publishers are kind of, you know, fighting over who gets to work with which student. And so, you know, it's pretty, pretty nice. This is the... Uh, well, uh, one one shot from the London show. Mm. And then this is back in the Ruskin Gallery. So um, it's the Ruskin Gallery is a lot smaller. So they can't put all of that stuff in there, but they take, you know, certain pieces. So this is last year's class. And the guy on the right, the man above the, the woman in the sweater, um, 
that's Martin Salisbury, the one who I took over for. In case you wanted to see what he looks like, that's him. Mm -hmm. I was expecting somebody, somebody much more elderly. He's, he doesn't look elderly at all. I, I will tell him you said so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is the Bologna stand. So at the Bologna Book Fair every year, the students, um, well, okay. So I'm gonna back up for a second. The London show is something that the students actually um, do as an optional activity. So it's not part of the course. Um, so it's, it's kind of, you know, the border there of what we were talking about because, you know, we want the students to do this professional practice, but we don't have room for it actually on the course. So I organized that London show um, and I'm doing it for the, the coming up group right now, but um, the students actually have input into it. So they're making all of the decisions if they want to, you know, keep it the same way it has been in the past or make changes, it's up to them. And then they fundraise for it as well and pay for it. So it's not actually part of the course. And so the Bologna stand is, an, is a similar thing where um, Pam Smy um, actually puts it all together and runs it and she takes the work of 80 students. And, um, but they have this booth um, that's just for our students. And publishers actually make appointments so they can come in and look at the student work. Oh, wow. Yeah. So in the beginning, the students all were going as kind of a class trip, and they were standing in lines to show their work to publishers. And eventually, uh, Pam said, you know what? The publishers really want to see our work. Why are we standing in line? Mm. And so they, she got this booth, and um, it's pretty incredible um, so every student who wants to go, you know, they pay a certain amount and they have one piece that they put into a group portfolio and then they all have an individual portfolio and then they all can submit up to three dummy books. And so they'll have three copies of each dummy book. Wow. And so this is the front room where just anybody can walk up and look at dummy books. So one of the copies goes here. But then in that back room... There's, I don't know if you can see the boxes, they have all of the dummy books filed away in there. And then there's some shelves that have each person's portfolio filed away. And there's four tables. And at each table, there's going to be one teacher. And that teacher is going to sit down with the publisher. And the publisher looks at that portfolio that's got one piece from each student in it. And they flip through all 80 of them and say, I want to see this one, this one, this one, this one. Wow. And yeah, and, and so there's somebody there that there's a, a student who's working and they go grab all of those portfolios off the shelves and they grab out all the dummy books for those people and then that publisher, you know, flips through the individual ones and they pull out the cards they want to keep them. And there's a scribe at every table. So there's a person who's writing down every single thing that that publisher says and then later it's getting typed in and that information is going to every one of those students who's participating. So even if they don't get a call from that publisher, they know if somebody liked their work or a lot of times the comments are, oh, wow, I really love the color on this, but it's not right for our list. Oh. So, you know, that's great information because the students have some feedback on their work, even though they know that that particular publisher isn't someone they should pursue. That's amazing. Okay. So organized. <laughs> I would love that. These are, these are publishers from all over the world, right, Shelley? Not just UK, yeah. and it, including U.S. publishers, anybody who's at the Bologna Absolutely. show. And this is where last year um, I saw, um, oh, what is her name? Uh, Harris? Is that her name? Patty Ann? Yeah, Patty Ann Harris. Patty Ann Harris, yeah. But, Who I but, knew yeah. from the SCBWI Austin conference and the girl illustrators were her, you know, helpers while she was there. And I saw her coming out of the booth and I said, oh, you know, I introduced myself and reminded her I was with the girl illustrators. And, and she said, you know, oh my gosh, well, for one thing, I love the girl illustrators. Um, <coughs> but also she said, um, I, I never knew about this booth before. And now that I know I'm going to be here every year. And um, so, you know, it's really great because all of these students, 
it, it's almost like um, these teachers become the agents for the week for the students. So even though um, you know we we don't necessarily have a a whole um, class that's on you know promoting yourself, this is a really great experience for the ones who participate and um, they get to yeah. know a lot of people through this so it kind of is like a professional practice class um, even though it's additional to the course but no one who's who's not been on the course can actually participate um, can but, I ask a couple questions when you're yeah about the dummies yeah uh, are those actual completed interiors or because I see yeah. the covers are totally finished are the interiors that finished or are they mock dummies like they're the most of, them, they're, most of them they're actually finishing because wow. they're, doing, they're completing these as their um, master stage module and so you know they're actually doing them for the course so most most of the time they are finished um, Shelly, there's a question from the um, the viewers. Okay. Uh, they want to know how they can access this program. So, how much can they take one course? How much does it cost? Can I and go? Can any of it be done <laughs> online? You guys can all come. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, yeah, it's it's something that you have to be in Cambridge to do. So there's there's not really an online component yet. Um, and it, I, I don't know what the cost is for out of country residents. I, I know that, um, for EU and UK, it's about 9,000 mm. pounds and that's, that's for the whole course. So no matter whether you take it part time in two and a half years or you take it full time in a year and a half. Um, so, I mean, I actually think that's pretty reasonable considering, what some of the American schools charge. Um, yeah, but like I said, I don't know what it is for an American going to that school. Do you have a residency requirement? Like if someone lives there for a year, then they can do in, uh, they don't have to pay the international cost. That's a good question. I, I think you would probably have to actually be a resident of the UK, which, you know, is a process. Yeah which I haven't been through yet, but um, yeah, the admissions program could tell you, but they do have a summer school, which again, I'm not running the summer school, but it's run by a couple of our teachers and it's got a lot of our teachers on it and it's a week long thing that happens in July. Ah. And, and there usually are some Americans there. It's all on picture books though. So whereas the course is any kind of children's book illustration, um, the summer school is specifically for picture books. And so, so the woman who runs it, her name is Nesswood and she's a picture book designer. And then Pam is kind of the second in command. Um, and then the different teachers, you know, there's a few of them that work the whole week. And it's kind of like a mini version of the course because they they do the different topics and um, go from start to finish um, and then on the Saturday following the week long creating of the picture book um, they have a conference and so there's a bunch of UK authors and illustrators and um, publishers come for that conference and I went to that this past year and that was really good as well. So by course, just to straighten out the terminology, by yeah. course, do you mean, I'm used to that meaning a class. Do you mean yeah. the entire program, like the degree so, yeah. program? Yeah, in the UK, course means like a degree program. So, um, yeah, and then instead of saying a class, they say a module. That's it. So, yeah. Oh, okay. someone was asking if they, if y'all might offer... Uh, saw online classes in the future? Um, possibly. Um, I guess that's a, 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 um, a request. <laughs> yeah, I know. I think um, at least you can try to um, start anything new and I've been there for six months now. So, um, but yeah, I, I think that would be um, a really great 
thing to do. Um, and oh, I did want to mention also just a couple of things about UK publishing in general, um, because this was a big surprise to me when I got here as well. Um, so generally, the um, for a picture book, they pay a lot less than they do in the US. So um, think of a figure that, but um, so a lot of a lot of the books on the stand here get sold during that week. So by the end of the week, if, if you're a publisher with an appointment, um, you don't get to see as many books because once you know they've got a contract on them, they're not going to show them to any more publishers. Um, and and so I thought that was pretty incredible too. And then I found out that um, usually for the UK, you know, they'll get a two or three book deal and the fees they'll pay will only be like, I don't know, five or six thousand pounds. And, and the person is writing and illustrating. And so that seems kind of ridiculously low to me. Are um, the royalties higher? No, the royalties are about the same. Um, the no. difference is that in the UK, because it's such a small market, and I, I think that's why the prices are low, but they depend a lot on international rights. Mm -hmm. And so when they sell a book, it's usually not going to be just published in the UK. They're buying the book because they think they can sell it in a lot of other markets. And different publishers have, have kind of different philosophies on that. Like some of them are, um, you know, smaller, more artsy kind of publishers and they just buy it for themselves. But most of the big publishers are buying it because they think they can sell it also in a lot of the other um, European or Asian markets. So you might get paid, um, you know, more times for the same book versus one big chunk like in the U.S. Uh, and a lot of the books are sold to the U.S. as well. Um, but I, I thought that was kind of an interesting difference. And also they work very strictly on the self-ended picture book. So it means, you know, page one and page 32 are being pasted down. And so, you know, in the U.S., you usually have 32 pages um, to create the illustrations. But in, in the U.K., you usually have 12 spreads because you're using um, pages of the book as end pages. So in that way, it's a little bit less work, although most people would rather have more pages to tell their stories. Um, but those are kind of like the major differences that I've learned since I've been here. Shelly, all those dummy books, are they, like how finished are they in terms of binding and do they produce them on campus there in a print lab? Um, well, different people do different things. I think some people are really into book binding and so they'll bind their own. A lot mm -hmm. of people um, just send them off and have them um, printed by one of the online publishers. I'm trying to think of names. I can't think um, of any book baby or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> Things like that where you can just get a few copies printed. Um, and, you know, of course that means you have to be done soon enough that you can send them off to have them printed. But um, yeah. And, and like I was saying earlier um, with being that this is usually part of their actual um, you know, work that they're turning in to be graded, they usually do finish the whole series. Um, unlike when, you know, we make dummy books, typically we're doing all sketches and then just finishing a few um, finishes to show. Uh, most of these books will be finished all the way through. Mm. Is that and true? not to say that they're going to be published like that. You know, if they get bought, they're usually being redone anyway, but... Is, is that just because it's through the school that they finish the whole book in advance? Or is it um, if someone were like an individual in the UK submitting a book dummy, would they also submit finished art? Or would they, do publishers accept the um, sort of semi, the sketch stage that we often submit here in yeah. the Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I, I don't really know the answer to. I, I know I heard one of the 
<clears throat> teachers before telling somebody that, um, you know, it's good for publishers to be able to see what the whole book looks like. And I was thinking, well, that could be a, a huge waste of your time. But, <laughs> yeah, because um, the feedback from the editor is so crucial and yeah, it changes. Um, the, the fact that so many of these students come out with two or three book deals yeah. tells me oh. that they don't necessarily have to see the whole thing finished, mm -hmm. you know, because they're, they're basing that on one book. So um, I, I think it just depends on if they like the, the work enough. Um, another thing that we've been talking a lot about is how do we teach these students to write because there's so much content in the course right now. It's, it's a master of arts instead of a master of fine arts because, um, you know, it's not as long as a master of fine arts course. But, um, you know, so it's a lot packed into a short amount of time and there's not really room to teach them much about writing. But one of the big comments that, that we get on um, the Bologna uh, stand is, that people love the illustrations and a lot of times the writing is really bad. Um, so, you know, you, you've really got a leg up if you know how to write and illustrate. Um, and, you know, we're presenting these to the publishing world. So we're trying to figure out like how, how we can go about that. Um, Shelly, that's true. Wait, 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 wait. Did I just hear you? Okay. So you said that uh, a lot of the people who present their books, at two to three book deals, but what they're presenting is not well written. Yeah, I mean, I don't know that it's those same people okay. um, who are getting the, the book deals, but yeah, there's there's definitely um, books, and you know, we definitely hear from publishers that like, oh, I really like this work, but the writing is just not very strong. Um, and I, I think a lot of that might be that, um, you know, there are a lot of international students who have English as a second language, who, you know, have a harder time um, just writing in English anyway. And so we're not, we're not spending time helping them with their writing, you know. Well, so uh, do you, in your courses that you actually teach, a course, excuse me, um, modules that you actually teach, Shelly, um, how much is writing part of what you are able to instruct them on? So we do have write. Let, let me, um, okay, let me get to, well, no, I'll just answer your question. Um, so every module has a small written component, and it's usually some, some sort of self-evaluation. So they usually have to write a proposal. This is the topic I want to pursue for this module. And then at the end, they'll look back and say, well, you know, um, this aspect is something that I could have done better, and in the future, I'm going to try X, Y, and Z. Um, so it's usually something small like that. Then there's one module that is all, it's the main written component, and it's um, the dissertation. But it, it's also reflexive, so, the, you know, there are, they're looking at the work they've done, so what did I struggle with? But they're researching other illustrators, and um, so they're, you know, it's, it's like a total writing a going narrative structure, and you know what I mean? So they, they do have to write, but they have to write in a different way. Hmm. And oddly enough, we don't, we don't mark them on their writing. So we're marking them on the content of the writing, but not the writing itself. So yeah, it's so strange. There are a lot of illustrators that don't write their own books. So it's right. Kind of, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think, I think that, you know, a lot of people that's probably what they're hoping for is to illustrate other people's work. But when they, when people come to this Bologna stand, I think they're looking for books that they can just buy right off the stand and publish. Yeah. That's fascinating. Yeah, it is. Do you have to have a graduate degree in order to take this course? Because it's a master's course, right? Right. Yeah. No, you don't have to. Um, there, I mean. I, What's the criteria? 
for somebody who wanted to, would want to apply to this course? So we look at portfolios and, you know, looking for um, sketchbook work. So both observational drawings and also, you know, kind of the thought process, the creative process, um, looking at some finished work. But I think more than drawings, um, shows. So, you know, we, we've looked who didn't have the strongest drawings, a lot of ideas and could talk about their ideas and, um, you know, got really excited listening to them. Um, sometimes people will come from a different area of the arts, but there's also people that are, you know, lawyers or scientists or whatever, and just have always loved to draw and, um, you know, decided they want to try this out. So, so it sounds like you're really looking at personality as well, just sort of yeah. that drive and passion to be a good artist or storyteller. Yes, looking for people who have a lot of drive and ambition um, to do this um, because it is a lot of work in a small amount of time. It's intense. It looks extremely intense. Yeah. So yeah. you have more in your slideshow, right? Yeah, I do. So this is a conference. I, I just wanted to point out that in addition to the school, Cambridge itself has a lot going on. Um, so at Cambridge University, they have um, a master's and a PhD in children's literature. And so a lot of the books that are written um, you know, critical analysis of children's books are coming from Cambridge. It's Homerton College. And so they put on a children's book conference every year. So this was synergy and contradiction, but it, it was a picture book conference. Um, and so our students and I um, got together and came up with a theme and put on an art show uh, during the conference. And then these are a couple of our teachers that were presenting at the conference and it was pretty amazing because I don't know if, if anyone's read like Perry Nodelman's work or um, uh, Maria Nikolaeva um, or different you know books about children's books and all of these people were there and so it was kind of a little um, I was fangirling a little bit <laughs> but um, and actually in Perry Nodelman's talk he so to slide of one of Divya's books. So that was kind of exciting. Divya is a girl illustrator. She does the Little Owl's Night series, yeah. Little Owl. Yeah. And so this is another illustration conference is coming up at the school where I work. And um, it's, it's open to anyone. And it's decriminalizing ornament. And it should be <laughs> fun. Yeah. Um, and then... This is just some examples of some of our graduates and seeing their work on Twitter. Um, there is, we do have a Twitter feed that I run kind of sporadically. And so I, I often tweet a lot of our alumni stuff. What's and your then, handle for the Twitter? Twitter? Um, it's Anglia, what is it? Anglia Mac, at Anglia MacB. So it's like MA children's book illustration. So, Anglia, M-A-C-B-I. Yeah. Um, so we have our own historic independent bookshop. It's, it's not as big as book people, but um, we have a lot of book launches there and um, many alumni book launches there. This is the inside of that um, bookstore. It's called Heifers. <laughs> <laughs> Which no one seems to laugh when... when the laugh. cow, right? A female Yeah. Female. <laughs> yeah. They're just not Texan. <laughs> I know, I know. If that was in Texas, we would all laugh every time we said... <laughs> <laughs> it's not a very flattering word. <laughs> I know. Yeah. They don't seem to know that. But um, in Cambridge, they do have cattle that are in the city. So it's really strange because there's these historic you know, buildings and, and schools and everything. And then there's just cattle in the fields grazing. 
and nobody seems to know why they're there or anything. But. Well, you see, I mean, we have all those longhorns, but they're not it's, on the It's camera. for atmosphere. Yeah, it's <laughs> part of the environment branding. So there's Martin again, and um, I don't think you can tell, but he's got some extreme eyebrows. And <laughs> my first day teaching, they introduced me, and a student came up to me at the end and said, your eyebrows are much less impressive. <laughs> okay, maybe they'll grow. <laughs> um, and so there's a ton of competitions in the UK for student illustrators and like children's book illustrators, and usually our students win them all. Um, and so this was a year that you can see the top four prizes all went to our students. And then these are other students who had their work in the show as well. And of course, Martin. And that's Pam down in the bottom in the black. Uh, the part time, full time at different times is amazing to me. Um, but so you start with observation and experiment, um, just trying lots of different media, learning printmaking, going to different locations to draw, and uh, learning to draw the figure and the figure in space. Um, and then sequential image is all well about sequential image um, so you're choosing a sequence and it's supposed to be inspired by something you've done in your observation module um, and then the next module is diploma project so that's the first time that you're actually thinking about children and you know actually illustrating for a specific audience and um, gearing your work to that audience and so sometimes the students will have side projects there so they'll create a couple of different projects over that module and then the diploma review that is the one that is um, the dissertation so you're looking back at diploma project and seeing you know what went wrong or what did I struggle with and then you know, say it's color, um, you're researching how other people have approached color and, um, you know, writing a 6,000 word essay about that. Um, so hopefully you come out the other side of that and you're an expert on color. Um, and then master stage is a double module and that's basically just, you know, building your portfolio and coming up with lots of different projects. Um, and that's what you're going to end up showing at the, the show in London and then taking to Bologna with you. And, um, and a lot of those do get published, which is really exciting. Um, and I did meet someone at an SCBWI event a couple weeks ago who had done the summer school. So she just did the week. And um, she said, hey, uh, tell Ness and Pam that my book's getting published. I was like, wow, that's amazing, you know, you do a book in a week, and um, it took her a couple of years, but it's getting published now, so that was pretty exciting. Um, so let me see, that was, this is my last slide. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, bring it back here. And, and, uh, most people think it's easy, and it's not. You know, it's like the quotation from Mark Twain, if I'd had more time, I would have written less. It's yeah. hard to write um, children's books. There are generally fewer words. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And most yeah. people through pictures. I had a question, actually, on the, the, the course itself. This yeah. Um, do the students get a lot of time one-on-one -on -one with the teachers and staff? They do. And in the beginning... There's more teaching, and everybody gets maybe like a 15 or 20 minute individual tutorial each time they're in. Mm -hmm. And then as you move through the course, the idea is that it gets uh, more independent. And so by the end, you're just having those individual tutorials. Mm -hmm. But also, you're supposed to be, um, you know, forming the group within the, the class, you know, your colleagues. So you still come in for that class time, but the idea is that you're either working independently or you're uh, meeting with your classmates and giving each. All the um, participants are really impressed. 
shall we? They're sort of dumbfounded and they're not coming up with questions because they're just sort of, I think their jaws are hanging <laughs> open. I, I, well, I, hey, I was dumbfounded too. What's that? I want to take this course now. <laughs> it just seems like a wonderful pro dream program, Shelly. Yeah, I want to take it too. <laughs> Maybe you can squeeze it in. Are accommodations yeah. provided for students, or is there, is there on-site accommodations for students who wish yeah. to pay for it, or? Yeah, it? there's dorms. I, I don't, you know, I, I've never been in one, so I can't attest to how great they are, but I imagine they're typical. <laughs> Ronald Seals, just look at his photo of, yeah, with his flip-flops. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's true. I don't know if his room's available. Um, what about scholarship and financial aid for people who can't afford um, the cost um, on the outset? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, again, I don't know the answer to that. Um, I know that because it's a graduate program, there's probably less things available than an undergraduate program. Yeah. And... We have a student who she had to intermit because she had a major surgery and she just came back and she did a crowdfunder and raised the money for her last there three semesters. Wow. Yeah, I was like, gosh, that's so a lot of money. Order. But yeah. Um, so I don't It's not a lot of money for the amount you learn. I mean, that's about 9,000 pounds. That's about 15,000 U.S. Yeah. Um, that's still cheaper than a year of education here yeah. in the U.S. Those colleges. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, I know. I, I had looked into SCAD prices a while back, and I so think, crazy. yeah, it was like 20,000 or something a year. Yeah, yeah, if you don't live on campus. If you do, if you want to live in the dorms, it's about twice that. Yeah. So they anyway, I, um, if you go to the school, I know you know there's international admissions, and they'd be happy to answer any of those questions. And um, and if anyone wants to email me and ask other questions, you know I can answer or or send you in the right direction if I can't answer it, but. Wonderful, Shelley. That was just such a great, you know, what, what your school offers, one thing that a lot of schools can't is this legacy and the is tradition. There, is there a certain art style that um, your school emphasizes? Because it does seem like there's some similarities in the style of art that I see. Um, or is it kind of just totally based upon, you don't really pick upon style or is it just kind of merits? Because I don't know how quite. I think kind of a general UK thing is that the illustration style is a lot looser. Um, you know, that's just something that I've noticed there. And then I think because there's so much printmaking going on, I think that kind of influences it as well. Yeah. Um, so a lot of work has a more limited palette. Um, but no, there's not, there's not a particular, I mean, we're not even really supposed to say the word style. Martin would freak out if he heard me saying that, but um, we talk about visual language and like, you know, the students doing all of that observational drawing and in the beginning is supposed to be developing their own. Um, and, and that's the way I was trained as well at the School of Visual Arts. It was really based on um, observational drawing and trying to develop, you know, your own way of approaching um, the subject and feeding that into your illustration. Do teachers help students to sort of develop their technique as far as the tools they use and palette? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So, Great. shall Great. we talk about art now?